So what I'd like to do now is diagram for you the config manager hierarchy. As you plan for implementing a hierarchical uh, config manager site solution, we need to understand the various different elements involved and what your options are. So we have spoken previously about how you can deploy a single standalone primary site. But uh, in this module, what we're focused on is deploying a hierarchy of sites. Now each site has its own set of site servers and its own database uh, for managing a site full of client devices. But with a hierarchy, it gives us a broader range, um, more options and flexibility when it comes to how we assign the clients to various different databases and site systems. Um, it would be probably in an environment where we are geographically dispersed. Now, there's some caveats on that because a single primary site, even a standalone, can support up to 100,000 devices. And to handle and work with some of the geographic disbursement, uh, if our network is fairly reliable, then we can simply put distribution points at these various geographic locations. And then we would use role-based access control to home in the administrative elements. So when it comes to a hierarchy and we're planning for a hierarchy, why do we do it and what does it look like? So let's start. If you're going to do a hierarchy, you start with the top level, which is the central administration site. The central administration site has a site system server and its own database but no clients are assigned at this level. It is purely there, as the name implies, for administering the environment from a central location. Now, below that, we can have one level of primary sites. We're not going to go any deeper than that with our primaries. And now that's a big change from Config Manager 2007, where a primary site could be a child to another primary site and so on. Can't do that anymore. We now are simply at one level deep below the central administration site. Now each one of these sites has its own site system, primary site system and database and they can support um, you know, many thousands, up to 100,000 client devices all checking into this site. Now in many cases this might be regional, our major regions like perhaps North America perhaps Europe, Asia Pacific, and so on. Now again, each one of these sites has a site system and its own database. So we, we start to spread the load a little bit here. We take our client devices in each of these major regions and we assign them to each of these sites. Now, we wouldn't necessarily have to do this if we felt like the connectivity between these regions was reliable and was solid. Um, if we had less than 100,000 devices globally, even with these regions, we wouldn't necessarily need to do this. They can all report into the same central site. However, in some cases, we may want to centralize the network access for these elements. Now, <coughs> <coughs> now, now, these elements here, these various different sites, can be centralized and we could simply put a distribution point at each of these regional offices. That way the heavy lifting, the heavy downloads, the heavy elements of uh, downloading an operating system image, downloading packages, that can all come from distribution points. It doesn't necessarily have to have its own dedicated site. But in many cases, we want to expand in this fashion in order to protect the bandwidth and also centralize the administration at each one of those regions. Now, data from each of these regions will flow up to the central administration site, data being site-based data. So we can have, at the central location, global type reporting. I can run reports about clients across all of my regional locations. And uh, I can also manage from the central location by configuring some of these elements. I can create 
new rules, new policies. I can configure a lot of this stuff at the central location and that will replicate downward. This is what we call global data. Replicates downward configuring each of those primary sites for me. Now, below each of the primaries, we could create secondary sites if we wanted to. This would be like a branch office location. Maybe in North America, our main offices are in New York, but I have a branch office location in Dallas. Uh, that branch office might have 500 users, and I've decided that I want to have a secondary site in Dallas because the WAN connection is fairly unreliable. By unreliable, what I mean is that the clients, those 500 clients that get assigned to that secondary site, they can get all of their information directly from the site systems at that secondary location. And we control what flows up and down across that bandwidth. Now, that includes connecting to a management point, connecting to distribution points. Everything, every bit of client communication can be isolated to a site system server at that secondary location. But an alternative now in Config Manager 2012 is to just simply put a distribution point server. Instead of creating an entire secondary site, let's just put a distribution point there. The distribution point is doing the heavy lifting, as we mentioned. So the only thing the clients are getting at their local area network are the large files, the application packages, the OS images, and so on. But their management points might still live back at the main office. But those are fairly small, XML-based, uh, policy-based information that transfers back and forth. Um, but if you can handle that amount of WAN traffic due to Config Manager, it's the heavy lifting that we want to control. So we download our heavy packages once to the distribution point, and then all the clients can retrieve them at that location. So we have new and sort of better alternatives to utilizing secondary sites, but the decision is still yours. You still evaluate bandwidth, still evaluate client requirements, and decide what you need in order to deploy. So these are the options when we're building out a hierarchy of sites. Keep in mind that you cannot take an existing standalone primary site and join it into a hierarchy. You have to start with a hierarchy, basically start with the central administration site here, create that first with its own database and site system, and then create primaries that hook into it. And that's how we build out a larger or more geographically dispersed site hierarchy.